how are you, how are you guys? Yes. So my name is uh, Tafadzo, aka DJ Yams. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to this uh, um, exciting episode of uh, No Limitations. Yeah, thank you so much to my baby girl, to my best friend, to Pio. Thank you for inviting, uh, for inviting me onto your platform to just share my story, inspire somebody. Yeah, so my story goes like this, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so I grew up, um, I loved sports so much in primary school. I was a very sports fanatic. I played more sports, hockey, cricket, soccer, what swimming, whatever you might call it. Um, I was more of an outdoor person than an indoor person. I enjoyed um, my sport. I enjoyed playing with other kids. I was not one of those brainiacs, you know, not one of the most intelligent uh, people when it comes to the academics, but I was, uh, no, I report, report, you know, <laughs> yeah, about, about an average student, slightly above average, you know, I think I was to maybe put myself between 50 and 75%. So, yeah, um, I then went to high school, if you know, taught for the perfect time, you know what I'm talking about. So, I went to Prince Edward from high school and, um, they, you know, Prince Edward is what was well known and still well known of uh, sports, you know. So yeah, I used to play, I then went on to play cricket and, um, and a bit of hockey, and um, yeah, I think more mostly I just focused so much on cricket, a bit of hockey. I then cut down a lot of what a lot of sporting activities, but then I also went on to play club football at another sixteen. Yeah, I will not mention the the club. But anyway, um, so one, something that I've learned in life is um, life is what you make it. Life, you have to paint the picture of what you see. So for me, um, after my high school, I went on to actually, I took a gap year and I was a, you know, I was a sports coach in another private school in Harare. And then I went on to study for uh, sports management and coaching in South Africa. And yeah, that's when, you know, I had a different script of the day. That's when I began to have challenges with my eyesight and I... I began to lose my sight. Yeah, I began to lose my sight. I uh, I came back to Zimbabwe, went to the doctor. The doctor said you have cataract. They did a cataract operation, which was successful. Said I've got a retinal detachment, and they tried to do an operation with this Indian doctor, and it just didn't go the way I went, and my world was crumbled. My world came to a standstill. Mama me, I remember that day, 16 May 2009. That was terrifying. Every time you'd open your, your eyes and you wouldn't be able to see anything, that would just bring so much anger in you. Um, yes, you know, when you're desperate, you know, when you're born to be desperate, you do a lot of things. I went everywhere you think I would go. Prophets, pastors, my post story. You'd go everywhere because you're so desperate to see. Until my pastor said to me, if you do anything out of desperation, you're about to make the wrong decision. So I said, okay, that could be true. Then I just stopped being desperate. I said, anyway, after all, God knows that I'm, I'm not blind, I don't have sight, and he's going to give me sight. So one verse that inspires me is uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, who says, Nyams, I know the plans that I have for you, plus to prosper you and not harm you. And I started picking myself up, you know. I just found this strength in me, you know, the strength, you know, when you like, you like, okay. You know, have you ever got to a stage in life where you say, Come rain, come thunder, whatever. Come, I will face it head on, no matter what happens. Of it, that's the strength that I got. And I just started taking life from a very negative perspective, you know. So yeah, I I got blind 20, 2009, 2010. I was already at rehab, and everybody thought I'd been too quick to go for rehab. Then very same year, I featured in a drama series. I never knew I could act, but I I, I featured in a drama series that showed for for six months on on on, on ZTV. That's crazy, eh? Uh, the following year, 2011, I then went, uh, got a full scholarship. I went to start in India, British management. And uh, I think that place was a place where I also helped me really discover myself and find myself. Because we have 21 students from 15 different countries, and we used to call ourselves uh, the United Nations, you know. I remember with a guy from Kenya, uh, another, guy, another friend from Liberia, another friend from Peru, and we used to sing different colors. One people, different, yeah, anyway, singing is all my stuff. But you know, you then begin to ap appreciate yourself as you we are. Like, you know, I am a creation. I am what I am because, you know, you meet different people from different backgrounds, people who've defied their odds, people who've been born blind, people who've sinned all, and yes, still this baby in disability. 
but they help you rediscover and reconnect yourself. For myself, 2012, I went to Kenya to attend the uh, United Nations Youth African Conference on post-2015 MDGs. That's they represent the people with disabilities. It was a great opportunity for me, eye-opening. I really then discovered myself on strength. And yeah, um, 2014 was one of the most greatest moments ever in life. You, can, you know what I'm talking about? You want to know what I'm talking about? It was one of those greatest moments, trust me. You want to know this one. <clears throat> so in 2014, I, I went to America as part of the Yali cohort for 2014, when the Yali Pro, uh, Fellowship started. And I was at Northwestern University doing um, starting business entrepreneurship. And uh, yeah, I had amazing people, amazing, my, the 25, 24 other guys that I was there at Northwestern University. These guys were so great! These guys were amazing! I had fun with them.